Hi guys, this is Sai from Lakeland Ascents and Highland Ascents. So we've just been scrambling today. Um, I've literally just said goodbye to my client and um, I just thought I'd take this opportunity just to go through the technical kit that um, I'd take scrambling on, like a kind of grade two, grade three um, scrambling route. So this is a route that maybe I don't know, so I don't have that beta of uh, what gear I'm definitely gonna need and what gear I'm definitely not gonna need. Or it might just be that I want to have lots of options um, in my toolkit um, in case the weather changes or the route's busy or we decide on a different objective. So I'm gonna go through the kit, the technical kit, the climbing kit that I'd take on a day like that. Let's get into it. Scrambling's about moving fluidly through the mountains, having a nice journey on technical mountaineering terrain. We don't want so much kit that it's going to slow us down, but at the same time we want to make sure we've got enough kit to keep ourselves safe, keep our partner safe and deal with any sort of changes in say the weather or if we end up on a different, on a different route than we intended. Okay, so this is the technical kit that I would take on a kind of grade two, grade three route where I didn't have that beta of um, kind of knowing what kit I'm definitely going to need. Let's go through it quickly. So in no particular order, I've got four quick draws. And these quick draws are basically, I've made these myself. So what we've got is two wire gates um, and a sling, a 60 centimeter uh, Dyneema sling connecting them. Um, and that enables me to protect any little pitches that I might want to lead. Uh, and it also gives me the opportunity of using the shorter slings, uh, you know, round spikes, that sort of thing, um, if I need to. I don't think any more than four is necessary really because if you're going to be placing more than four pieces of gear on a pitch you're probably on some pretty hard technical terrain and you're kind of getting into the world of rock climbing as opposed to mountaineering so four maximum kind of works for me. I've got four slings okay so these are 120 centimetre uh, Dyneema slings again um, and you know these are actually on on small lightweight screw gates they'd be fine on snap gates too as long as you understand the sort of limitations of using a snap gate instead of a screw gate but these screw gates are so small and light that you might as well have them with you and they're super useful for doing things like building belays and creating attachment points where you need that extra security of a gate so i've got four of these slings i mean they are all slightly different diameters but not intentionally really it's just what i grabbed this morning Another thing worth considering is getting one of these tubular Edelrid slings in your rack as well as these um, sort of flat um, Dyneema slings. Um, and these are great for when you want to kind of feed the sling around say a thread. Um, they're just that little bit stiffer, it just enables you to push it through super easily. And they also come and done nice and easily when they've been loaded. So when they've been knotted and loaded you can still undo the knot really easily. Whereas sometimes with the, uh, the flat slings it can be quite difficult. So worth having one of those in your armory as well. This is a 120 centimetre as well. Okay, so I like to carry cams. Um, you know, hexes are a good option as well if you can't afford any cams yet. Um, I'm, you know, not a massive fan of hexes. I find them really kind of cumbersome and noisy. They have their place in winter, but for summer, I've got cams, so I bring cams with me. And I like to take three here. So these are, these are DMM Dragon cams, uh, the purple, the green, and the red. So that's size one, size two, and size three. Um, obviously, you know, loads of different manufacturers out there, but that's the sort of size range that I would go for. Definitely a good idea to have some wires with you. I mean, I wouldn't take a full set of wires. I just think it's unnecessary weight. Uh, when you're scrambling, you've usually got the option of being able to move up or down to other stances and sort of pick a stance that works for the gear. Um, so what I tend to do is carry uh, roughly half a set of wires. These are DMM walnuts and the smallest size I've got is a four and the biggest size that I've got is a 10. So actually, if I just have a look what I've picked up today, I've got a four, a five, a six, a seven, uh, an eight and a 10. So, you know, roughly half a set. I mean, you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that the, uh, the wire you want is the one you don't have with you, but hopefully you'll have other options. You know, your cams, maybe a sling around a block or maybe using an alternative stance or a different method. I also got a handful of carabiners here. I always make a point of carrying a bow with me. Um, these kind of bigger uh, screw gate carabiners are great for doing things like working in an Italian hitch if you want to use that method to safeguard your second. Um, but in addition to that, I've just got, let's have a look, one, two, three, four um, sort of smaller um, screw gates, which I'd use for sort of building belays. 
I'm conscious as well that at least two of these screw gates is going to get taken up for um, taking coils and securing those coils, which we'll make another video about that. So obviously we have got the screw gates on the, on the uh, slings as well, and we could potentially use wire gates as well if we had those instead, as long as we understand the limitations of those. So that's basically the technical kit. I mean, in addition to that, I've obviously got my climbing harness. You know, light is right here. This is quite a light Arc'teryx harness, but you know, any climbing harness will be totally fine. And on my harness, um, I've got some sort of personal stuff that I always have with me, and that's a nut key. Uh, a belay plate and in this case this is a guide plate but if you don't know how to use a guide plate particularly to kind of lower somebody that's the tricky bit then just a normal belay plate is totally fine um, and then I've got just a snap gate with a couple of uh, prussics on in case I need to do any abseiling or any funky stuff. Um, I also carry a knife and that just enables me to cut any tat um, if I needed to leave some tat around a boulder or something to abseil off a root. Um, Finally, I've got my helmet here. It's an absolute no-brainer to wear a helmet when you're scrambling. Okay, so rope-wise, what we want is a rope that's long enough to enable us to lead short pitches and also long enough to potentially let us abseil down um, parts of the route if we need to escape it because of, say, poor weather conditions or just needed to get off the route in, in an emergency. We can only abseil half the length of the rope because we're going to wrap it around something and wrap on two strands. So if we've only got a 20 metre rope, we can only abseil 10 metres. So it's a balance between taking a rope that's super long uh, and enabling us to lead long pitches and uh, abseil a long distance. But then we've got the, um, the, uh, we've got the disadvantage of the weight. Um, and the flip side of that is taking a rope that's too short and doesn't enable us to add very far or doesn't allow us to do what we need to do in terms of uh, leading short pitches of climbing. Um, so for me, you know, this is a roughly sort of 35 uh, meter rope. This is a 9.1 uh, DMM Crux. Uh, it's not dry treated, it's just a, um, a cut off that I had from a longer rope that got damaged. But it's kind of the perfect length for scrambling with two people, I find. I think if I'm just going out with a friend one-to-one, -one, you know, I'd be looking for something 30 to 35 metres long, you know, maybe 40 metres max if there's two of us on the rope. I wouldn't bother with a 50 metre rope, but then if that's what you've got and you want to get, if you want to get one rope that's going to work for you for climbing, it's going to work for you for scrambling, then, you know, just take the hit, carry the extra weight until you've got the funds to get something more appropriate. Last thing is obviously a guidebook. There's some great guidebooks out there. It can be a little bit vague with some of their descriptions, but they give you a rough idea of where you're going, you know, how to get into a route and how to get off the route. This is where we've been today in the South Lakes. Last few bits are in my bag and essentially what we've got going on in here is stuff for a normal hill day, which we're not going to go into on this video. If you want to know what's in this pack, it's kind of normal hill kit you know, click in the, uh, the links below and we've got another video that just goes through that. Okay, great, that's us. So if you want to know more about kind of scrambling and mountaineering skills, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're going to be chucking out loads of free videos, so lots of free education for you. If you've got any comments on the rack that we've taken today, then, um, you know, just chuck, chuck those in the comments below and we'll have a chat about, you know, what you take and whether you think there's anything that we've forgotten today. Uh, we're also going to be putting up a video shortly on how to uh, take kind of mountaineering coils to shorten the rope when we're scrambling. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you check that out. Okay, thanks very much. We'll see you next time.